What about now? Can you hear me now? It's better. Go. Yeah, my, awesome. my turn. Good. So, hey, no, I think we're late. That's not a good way to be. So, Dana, I know I'm, I haven't introduced you yet, but just sit tight. We're we're in Asheville. Everybody's doing yoga and having a latte. They're going. They'll roll in in a minute. I'm in no rush. So, <laughs> thanks for having me. <laughs> you just tell me when. All right. Cool. Um, let's start off. Uh, thanks all for being here. Um, we do have an amazing guest today, but I wanted to start with any uh, any wins or bucket fills. If you guys had anything awesome happen in the last week or so, that you want to share, that'd be great. You guys are making me look bad. Look it up. No? All right, I'll start. So, intentional conversations in the morning. We've had a bunch of really, really great agents that are being vulnerable and getting on there and practicing their scripts, not, not practicing on their clients. And it's been really cool. because like Nothing more nerve wracking than being a brand new agent and jumping in a script practice with people that know what they're doing. So. I want to give a shout out to all those people that are showing up. It's been, it's been really cool to see. And I hope that you guys continue to keep coming to that on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Who else has a little bucket fill or appreciation? I do for Jacob. Um, I spend the morning talking to Jacob about command stuff. And a lot of you guys know I've been out for a while. Jacob is a magician. Um, if you're not using him, please, please do. You can sign up for 15 minute, 30 minute, an hour appointments. And he just totally knows what he's doing and he's happy to help. So Big bucket fill for Jacob. That's awesome. Cool. Anybody else want to jump in there? Matt Jernigan's crushing it. And I think we just, I, I think we just heard uh, somebody's audio is on and just turn your audio off, please. You can get stretching. You can get stretching. I would like to give a shout out to Natalie Malice for productivity coaching and getting me on the right track. I'm super pumped about it. Nice. And uh, yeah, I feel like I, I think I've had my license since for like five years now. And I feel like I'm just getting into real estate for the oh, first cool. time. So it feels good. That's awesome. Go Natalie. Yay. Yeah, she's awesome. Hey, Jeff. Yeah. Hey, I just want to reach out to uh, everyone at the Market Center for their thoughts and prayers for my family. Um, we are making it, uh, like I've told several of you guys, the house is still standing and the mix max sock bucket is not getting full. So um, thank you for your thoughts and prayers and we are getting healthier by the day. That's awesome. I'm so glad to hear that, Scott. We, yeah, we all been thinking about y'all. I know it's hard to, we're all pivoting, but health is something that's scary. So way to hang in there on that. That's great. Um, anybody else want to throw anything in there? I have a shout out to David Kessiker who put his first home co under contract. And from what I hear, it's a doozy. And I believe he's missing this meeting because he is working on keeping that home under contract. That's right. <laughs> Welcome to being a real estate agent. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Cool. Well, um, unless anybody's super passionate about another shout out, I'm going to roll on. Anything? All right, so we got a special guest today. I don't know if any of y'all saw the uh, Facebook post that we made, but our our guest today is uh, Dana Gentry from. Uh, what do you officially call yourself? Are you Kentucky? Are you South Carolina? What's what do we? What do oh we... my gosh, that picture is cracking me up. Um, I am. Uh, I'm officially Kentucky. Um, I live in Kentucky, but I also have a house in Charleston, South Carolina. So uh, I go back and forth. Uh, but all my businesses are in Kentucky um, and are in the Ohio Valley region. So, yeah. That's awesome. Do you see the color jacket I'm wearing? Uh, is it blue? I think it's blue, right? It's blue. I feel, yes, I feel good about it. Although the cats are big time letting us down this year in basketball. I don't know what's <laughs> happening with Coach Cal. Um, but uh, hopefully it's just a, a, a little spiff he's going through. <laughs> that's right. Cool. So, uh, Dana, I think I think the best way to do this is not everyone's had an experience, been able to rub shoulders with you and, and knows anything about you. So um, it's not your style. But tell us a little bit about what where you are and what you do and just give us a, a quick recap. Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, and I do want to say I apologize. I, I am working right now from the kitchen. I have like my dog is right here. I'm trying to like hope he doesn't bark the whole time. 
our uh, our HVAC went out yesterday morning, and they're installing a new one right now. Um, we we are the people who bought a new house two two and a half months ago, and our and our HVAC went out. So uh, so I'm working from here today while they're uh, currently installing another one, so we can get them here. So just in case you are wondering, uh, and if you hear a little dog bark, I apologize in advance. Um, I uh, oh yeah, there it is on the screen. Okay, so I. Um, this is my 15th, well, 16th year in real estate. Um, I attended the University of Kentucky, went to college there, actually was a sophomore at UK uh, with going down a business management degree path. And I was working for a builder at the time, uh, just sitting in new construction model homes on the weekends, uh, just for kind of some extra cash, really, to be honest. And at that time and in our state, you can represent a builder and you don't have to hold a license. So I was showing new construction homes on the weekend and that sophomore year of high school um, sold like roughly 30. And so someone was like, you should get your license. And so I actually did while I was in school that year and I, I dropped out and never went back to college. I didn't finish. I don't have a degree. And I, I just took off and started selling houses. And um, I was with a little independent brokerage. And I always say, I, I appreciate the open books policy of Keller Williams so much because we walked in one day, I was there about a year, and they said, um, we can't afford to keep the doors open oh. anymore. So officially today, your license is with Remax. <laughs> oh. and, yeah, and I didn't, know any, I didn't know any different or any better or anything. And so um, I, I merged with Remax that day and, and was with Remax for about five and a half years. And, um, and, then, and then by like the grace of God, got introduced to Keller Williams and it completely changed my life. Um, so I, I was doing about... 10 million, three years in a row at Remax by myself, um, no admin, no buyer's agent, anything like that. Average sales price around 150,000. Yeah, it was a lot, but I could not break through that ceiling uh, like at all. And so um, I, uh, I, I kept attending Keller Williams events and I was doing trainings on team building and at team building. I actually went to my broker at that time and said, um, I want to start a team. And she said, teams are a fad. And I was like, oh boy, I'm not, that is probably not exactly what I wanted to hear. Um, and so then from that point, uh, I ended up taking some classes more and switched to Keller Williams. Um, long story short, I, that year with Keller Williams, I uh, hired a full-time admin, brought on a buyer's agent, and we did 18 and a half million that year. Oof. So really finally learned to break through that ceiling. Yeah. And so ever since then, I've just been super passionate about, about the company and about the models and, and really following the models. Um, I got the opportunity to be an investor in a market center that year. Uh, we were opening a new office, a new office, my town in Lexington only had one Keller Williams office. Yeah. And so the region came and said, Hey, we're going to open another one. Um, and I got to be an investor in that. Uh, we were open four months and our OP and our team leader both stepped down. And so we had had the best launch our region had ever had. Uh, we'd, we'd never had a launch like that. And, uh, and we had no OP or team leader. So I was helping as the team leader for a couple of months. <laughs> and, um, and then after uh, a lot of prayer and a lot of time, ended up taking that team leader role. So um, with the team leader in that market center, we launched with like 42 agents and in two and a half years, I took us to 242 agents um, and was the largest growth our region had ever seen really, which then led to multiple other opportunities. I don't know how deep you want me to go into it, Jeff, but I'm passionate about the opportunity map of Keller Williams mm -hmm. uh, because I, I kind of followed it without even knowing what it was to be really honest and transparent. And I think sometimes as agents, we don't even fully understand the full uh, scope of the opportunity that there is inside of the company and following that opportunity map. So it's led me to be OP of now three offices. I work in the region with Linda and Jim and Preston McKissick as the growth director um, and a lot of other opportunities from there. My team still sells. I haven't been in production for the last five and a half years. Wow, that's, that's a lot, that's good. It's that's a lot. Good. When people are like, what do you do? I'm like, how much time do you have? <laughs> So yeah. uh, one thing that pops up anytime your name comes up, uh, I hear that you're a force. <laughs> what are they talking about? And like, what do you, what's that about? Is that, is that something you learned or like help, help us out with that? Cause we have a ton of agents on this call. Like we have brand new agents, we have seasoned agents. And then as yeah. you know, the model, we've got people in the middle. Yep. 
Yep, absolutely. Um, so I think a couple of things I kind of wrote down, hoping we could touch on today, just based off of mine and yours kind of conversation around today and me bringing the most value to your agents. Um, number one is mindset. Number two is habits. Number three, I'd love to touch on value proposition and where I really see agents being a force. I'll use your word this year. And then number three or number four, really perspective on last year. I have the opportunity to get to listen and mastermind um, with Gary Keller a lot and at least monthly now. And the, the way that he thinks and the way that he's changed my perspective on business <laughs> and especially the businesses that we're all in right now has been, um, has been really incredible and powerful. I think first and foremost, Jeff, really, when people, I think, maybe think of me, they always say they think of mindset. I have a Facebook group. I see you have it on there um, called Wednesday Morning Mindset. At, at week two of the shutdown last March, when the pandemic very first started, I was doing calls with agents, top agents in my offices, in our region, around the country, with other brokerages, not with Keller Williams. And it was like panic was setting in and everyone's mindset was in like a not great place, even friends and family members. And so I thought, okay, the one thing that I know is that your mindset makes or breaks you. I mean, we have the choice to wake up every single day and have a positive attitude or have a negative attitude. And the reality is you know, I've said this for a long time and people laugh, but I swear being a realtor is the only business that you can wake up in the morning and be at the height of heights. And with one phone call, you're in the pits of hell in like 30 seconds. Yeah. And then you can get another phone call and you're like back up and you're like, oh, this is amazing. I love this job. I'm, I'm a great business owner and, and I love being a real estate agent. And then you get another call and you're like, I'm done. This sucks. And i this is the worst career choice I've ever, I've ever had. And we laugh, but really it's true. I mean, we're in a high emotional, high financial, um, very can be competitive field of work that is ever changing on an hourly basis, it seems like. And, you know, I, it's funny because when I was thinking about my, the perspective, my perspective on last year, um, it's, it's interesting because, you know, I'll never forget right when the pandemic started, I had John mentor, John Maxwell is a mentor of mine. And it's been the biggest blessing in my life, really, to be honest, if any of you are John Maxwell fans, or you've read any of his books, he's just, he's an amazing human being, really. And, and so I was on a zoom with him right when the pandemic started. And he said, I want you to write down these words right now, write down these five words, you were born for this. And I said, okay. And so I wrote him down and he said, the reality is that right now, whatever space you're in, whether you're a realtor or a business owner, or you run a team or you, or you, you are a leader or whatever it is, you were born for this. And so you need to think about that with your mindset. You need to think about how you're going to push through this change because you know, actually I just led a top 20% mastermind for one of my market centers this week, yesterday. And I said to them, we used to think like, hey, our competitors are those people over at Remax or those people over at Caldwell Banker. I don't know who your big, who your competition is in Asheville. I know you guys have huge market share there, so you might not even have very much competition. But, but we used to say that. With the reality is now our competition is is not those agents, in my opinion. Our competition is Zillow. Our competition is Redfin. Our competition are um, these brokerages that are you know, that are waking up every day. I'll just use Zillow, for example. Jeff, has Zillow joined your all's MLS yet? Well, they're in the MLS, but they're not in our area. They're in Charlotte. Okay. Okay. Well, they have ours um, and, and they are across the country. And the reality is they wake up every day and want to put real estate agents out of business. Like we, we're just in a changing industry. And so for me, I think it starts with our mindset. We have to be very cognitive of the books we're reading, the podcasts we're listening to, the community we're surrounded in, the leaders that we listen to. I don't know about you guys, but my email is like flooded with everybody who wants to sell me a course and do this and do that. And, and it's great. And like kudos to the entrepreneurs. And, and I do a little bit of that myself too. But at the end of the day, we have to really be aware of our mindsets right now, because I think we're, we are in a war in our industry that we can easily win because I agree with Gary when he always says, Real estate will always be a relationship-based business. We're always a belly-to-belly, relationship-to-relationship-based business. We just have to change how we're going to do business. And we have to really look into that this year. And I think those of you that are pouring into your business and your, and your growth-based mindset and you 
you want to learn and you want to improve and you're quick to pivot. You know, it's, I can't remember what statistic we heard, but like over 70 something percent of people make a change after it's too late. They're, yeah. they're not early adopters. They wouldn't classify themselves as an early adopter. And in this market, I mean, we have to, we have to be, we have to change before the change is ready to be able to stay relevant. So I can go into as much of that as you want me to, but that's, I think that's, that's great. That's yeah. You actually gave me chills when you said that you were born for this. Cause I, I had a moment right when we went into lockdown, I remember we had a leadership call and I woke up that morning and call it God, whatever you want to call it. Literally my mindset was you were born for this. Yep. And literally I just got chills when you said that. Cause it, it was, I said it on the call that morning. And I, I think that we all got into a space where it was like, it's time to move. You've yeah. This your whole life. This it's time to move and get belly to belly with the people that mean a lot to you. It is. And, and, you know, when, when John said that, I really kind of felt it in my soul and in my spirit too. And it was interesting because, you know, Gary said one time on a zoom, cause I don't know how you guys feel. And I would actually love feedback in the chat about this, but even though last year was different and I don't, I don't, I'm not up on, up, on the up with the North Carolina. I don't know how, I don't know how long you guys were in shutdown or what you had to do, but mm -hmm. last year when we, I mean, I worked harder last year than I've ever worked in my life. <laughs> I yeah. mean, if you, if you look nationally, we, we had the best year in real estate. Our entire country has ever had in the history of our country in, in the industry. I mean, if you talk to every it's a blessing really, but every top agent that I talk to or coach with or any of those things, they had their best year they've ever had. I would be interested to see if you guys feel the same or if you did have the same. We did. Were, yeah. Yeah, it was record, mean, the, record. yeah. The best year ever. I mean, it's the best year ever. And even though we probably spent more time on zooms or we got to be, I mean, it was a blessing in a lot of ways because I actually got to see what it felt like to work from home and to not be on a plane four times every month and all those things. And I worked harder than I mentally I had, I was at my max last year. I mean, really at my max. And I know, you know, every agent, every one of my top agents that I talk with that that's in my world, it was interesting because when we did our masterminds, they had their best year ever and they had either never been more, um, lack of energy yeah. or never felt more exhausted, never felt more emotionally drained. It was like, we're dealing with all these things. We, we made more money than we've ever made. And we had the best year we've ever had yet uh, we, other things were suffering and we were exhausted. And so I think, I just think you have to be aware of that. You know, Linda and I have a podcast and one of the things we talked about, we did like an eight week series on was the two things that I, that we really believed would come out of the pandemic where people would want to focus more on their wealth and more on their health. Yep. Because those are two things that, that really you, we thought about, right? Last year, we really thought about those things. We thought about what does our money look like five years from now and 10 years from now and 15 years from now, whether you're 20 or whether you're 80, it doesn't matter. Really. The reality is that we all, we all really thought about that last year and same thing with our health. I mean, we really thought about our health because unfortunately, you know, we felt a little out of control when it came to health and, 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 and I actually just yesterday had to go have that stupid thing stuck up my nose for the first time because I was, I was in a meeting where all eight people now have COVID and I'm like, no, <laughs> Yeah. So, you know, we're living in a different time, honestly, but I will say one of my favorite quotes, Jeff is, is an Albert Einstein quote. And he says, in the middle of difficulty is where opportunity lies. And I wrote that on everything. I had that in front of me all of last year. I still have it this year in the middle of difficulty is where opportunity lies. And he doesn't say at the beginning, he doesn't say at the end, he says in the middle. Yeah. And for those of us who really see what, what we've gone through and what we're continuing to enter into this year. Cause I'm going to tell you, Gary just said on our zoom on our top 100 zoom last month, he thinks all the, all the economists think that this year will be just as good as last year, as far as real estate, if not better, we, right. we likely won't feel a little bit of a shift until 2022 or 2023. Yeah. Um, and, but it's a different kind of shift, right? It's a different kind. And, and the biggest difference in that is that <laughs> we have to change our value proposition and, and I'll share with you guys. I don't know how much time, just tell me to stop. When you, I'm you're, it's, it's awesome. I literally had things written down to ask you and they were your four that you said you wanted to talk about. So I'm okay. like having a party right now. So just okay. go okay. on. That, so. Well, yeah. if it's okay, I want to share with you. So I had the opportunity of um, in the middle of the pandemic. Well, I guess it was towards the end of the year. 
Well, and I don't know if you like my whole year, I don't every month run together. Like I can't remember what I did in February versus what I did in December. So one yeah. of the months last year, I had the opportunity of interviewing Lance and Karina Loken. And, yeah. and so one of the things, you know, the, the top, if not the top, one of the top three largest teams in our company. And one of the things that I asked them was, Hey, for 2021, what's y'all's big goal? What's y'all's like one thing? What's your thing that you're going to focus on? Well, I think that normally if we're talking about a one, three, five, I would have, I assumed that their one would have been either a GCI number or a unit number or a volume number. And it wasn't. And Karina said, Dana, honestly, you're going to think this is different. And she's like, but I'm just telling you, she said, our one for next year is 95% five-star rating customer reviews or higher. And she said, we believe their word of the year was experience or is this year. Now that we're in 2021 is experience. And yeah. she said, we believe that everything is changing. And she said, I don't know if you can see my, she said, this is our book. Uh, we, we are get, we gave this book to everyone, everybody on their team. Um, she said, we had our t-shirts made, um, the experience book. And so this is the book that, that all of my offices, ALCs, um, our leadership team, my leadership teams, my personal team, like we are all knee deep into the experience. Yeah, and, and Gary has touched on it too. And I believe that they're on to something with that. And I'll tell you why. If, if you f- shift your focus on your value prop being not only how can I have great customer service for my clients, but how can I give them the ultimate experience so that if you have somebody who you've sold their house, you know, you've done three or four transactions with them, but Redfin comes along, which this has happened in my market center already, one of my market centers. Red Fins came along to one of my top agents and, and to one of her clients and said, we'll, we'll list your house for 1% and, you know, we'll do everything and we'll do this and we'll do that. And she literally called Robin Jones, my top agent in this office and said, I just want you to know, like, we love you. I love your family. Our kids play soccer together. Um, I appreciate everything you've ever done for me, but I just don't want you to be upset. You know, right now it's about the dollar and that's what we've chosen to do. And so Robin called me and she's like, you know, the world is coming to an end because she's like, I never thought these people would not do business with me. And so we just walked around this whole process of, okay, what would it look like if we created an experience so much so that our people are, they don't even think about it when somebody comes along and says they want to list their house for, for what, I don't know. I know we're not talk, supposed to talk commission. So whatever, a discounted mm-hmm. rate. You're right. Price is important in the absence of value. So if yeah. Great, or, or like, what if they? What if Zillow, What if they? They stumble upon Zillow and and they're like, hey, we'll list your house for free and and we'll send you a Alexa or whatever, an Echo or whatever they're called, and we'll have a realtor. We'll pay a realtor fifty bucks to go unlock the door. I mean, our here's the deal. What they want is, and this is my opinion, and this is what Gary says. And again, I'm sorry. I'm trying to keep a dog from barking, so I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> trying to hold him up here so sorry for all of you non-dog loving people but what <laughs> gary, what gary says is true really if you think about it that they, they're gonna do they want to do business belly to belly but they want the urgency they want the they want the ability to do it all from this they want to be able to have the the things that we want now which is exactly why all of us go order something from amazon instead of buying it at the local you know ace hardware down the street that's owned by whoever because we want to do it from our sofa or our bed. Um, we, we want it tomorrow. We want it in two days. Uh, and, and we don't want to leave the house. I mean, so exactly right. yeah. we are those people. So we, we can't be naive enough to think that our clients aren't the same way. We do things for an experience. I'll tell you there. I mean, we paid $20 for it. I'm sorry, $20,000 for tickets to a, to John Maxwell event every year, because once I've done it once, the experience was so much so, I will never not do that again and be in the presence of John and do the experience that I have with him, really, to be honest. I would eat Raymond noodles <laughs> before I would ever miss that again. It's not going to happen because the experience is so much so that I'll never miss out on it. I mean, and so we have to think about that. And, you know, I just believe that I'm just trying to give examples like for my team, we're doing things, you know, we're going to probably take a little bit a step back in some of our profit because we're doing things we've never done before to create the experience. I mean, we're having, give me some examples. Like what do what do we do? Yeah. So, I mean, for real estate wise, like we've put together a whole club for all of our top referrals. We're having Papa John's pizzas delivered at, and chicken salad chick. I don't know what you guys have there, but at every single closing, whenever we know that our clients are moving, 
food is delivered to their house. We put, we bought these sensory boxes and our admins made these cute little things. And so every time we show, we go on a listing appointment or we show buyers that have kids instantly, we bust out this box and it's got all this stuff in there and houses, sheets of houses to color and these little trinket things. I don't even know what all's in there, but little things like that. I mean, we are, we are working to create every experience that we possibly can, whether it's through gift giving and through it's our donation. I mean, now what we do is we get, we send out and we get people's, um, their, their favorite charity. And so at closing, we make a donation, a $250 donation to their charity in their name. And we send them a certificate and it's framed. And so it's just cool. like, we want them to do business with us because of the experience that we give them. Honestly, this is super important. because a lot of times we hear like, Oh, I'm going to spend money on leads. I'm going to spend money. I need more leads. It's leaning in to the people that are already there it and is. creating that experience. That's awesome. Well, and I don't know about you guys. I mean, we, I would much rather work somebody that's a referral or a repeat than it is somebody that I have to chase down from an online lead. I mean, I'm not, I'm not against online leads by any, by any means or fashion. So don't, don't hear that. It's just the conversion rate and the ability to, to work with ease is so much different with somebody that comes from your sphere than it does from an online, you know, online lead. And, and, you know, Gary has said this since the, since last year and I, and we have a zoom with him on next Tuesday, I'm sure he'll say it again. He really says right now, there's two different camps of people. There's the camp number one, that is like, my business is great. I'm going to, excuse me, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm leaning in, I'm working, but I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. Or there's camp number two, which is, Hey, I realize that we're in a shift. I realize that things are different. I'm going to pivot. I may have to do things differently. I may even have to take a little bit of a step back. Um, but I know that what I'm doing is going to protect me and put a, build a moat around my business so that in five years, you know, we're, we're bigger than what we thought we would be. We're more profitable than we ever would. And, um, or than we ever thought that we would be. And I, I really believe sometimes that's a hard, that's a hard pill to swallow to think about. And I just, I trust that I think we have to learn to be that agent in camp number two. I mean, we, we just, we do. So tell me this, you, you said uh, you brought up habits earlier. So yeah. with all the things that are pivoting around us, I think that's the biggest challenge. We got kids at home, homeschooling, we've got yeah. all these things flying around. How do you, how do you manage your habits or what does that look like for you? So actually I'm not good at that. <laughs> and so because of that, habits is my word of the year for 2021 last year it was intentional I, I wore this somebody I got this little intentional bracelet I know you can't even see it it's like scraggly and falling apart now but I never took it off last year because it reminded me to be intentional um, and I got very intentional last year I got in deep relationships and it really worked so this year my word was habits and uh, I'm I'm a person of faith and so I started January with a 21 day prayer and fast and that was a whole nother thing but just because I needed to get in the habit of doing things uh, earlier in the morning. I mean, I'm an early-ish riser, but I needed to be an earlier riser because they're just there's not enough hours. <laughs> there's not enough hours in the day. I'm sure. Oh, thank yeah, you. So you guys feel the thank same you, way. Katie. Um, but you know, actually, oh, oh, sorry, is that okay? There we go. Um, actually, it was funny because Adam and you know Adam, Jeff, and you know how Adam is, and living with a coach is like a whole nother topic. Like I, someone should get me like a therapist for Christmas. Leah says it's terrible, right, right. Yeah, but but so Adam, uh, who's my partner and also who is a coach, uh, when I said this year, I said my word of the year was gonna be discipline. And he said, why? And I said, because I, I wanna be more disciplined this year. And he said, of course, well, you know what Gary Keller says about discipline, right? And I'm like, well, no, but I know you're gonna tell me. So what did he say? And he said, Gary says, there's no such thing as a disciplined person or a non-disciplined person. It's the difference between a person with great habits or with poor habits. And, and I was like, okay, well, that's very true. So I changed my word from discipline to habits because if you think about it, think about anybody that you would say is super disciplined. They, they weren't born that way, right? They have great habits and they follow their habits. And so I have a new morning routine um, and I love it. I'm very purposeful. I don't know. I would love to share my screen and show you one thing. I know, Jeff, we didn't talk about that. I don't know if I can or if I, is that allowed? Yeah, we're going to make it happen. Yeah, yeah I think okay. I can. Because I want to show you something that, and I'm happy to share this format. My coach shared this with me and it has been a life changer. Oh, oh, it says I can do it now. Okay. Hold on one second. Let me, I just, I, I just want to show this really fast. I, I think, I don't know how much time we have. Okay. Hold on. Um, okay. Okay. Hold on. 
Let's see. Um, okay, can you see my screen now? Yeah, 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 we okay. got it. All right, so this is um, this is my 411 <laughs> and I'm committed to it and I've never, I call it like the 411 on crack. I don't know what you're, like my coach gave me this template, Terry Foster Nallen, and it has, it has completely gotten me in a habit. Um, it, so I'll just walk you through basically really fast what it is, but I had to list out my, and I'm getting ready to add a category right here. So that's why that's blank, but you, you take your five-year goals and you put it in any aspect of your life. So in your, in your sales team in anything else that you have, that you work on, I have other companies that I do in your investments, in your personal development, in your financial, in your family, in your spiritual, in your physical, and you can add those ones should always stay there, but then you can add your other businesses, right? So you put your five-year goals then you go down and say, okay, in order to make those happen, here's what needs to happen in 2021. And then here's what needs, I'm getting ready to change mine for February right now. I have to go through this today. It's on my list, but here's what needs to happen this month. And then here's what needs to happen in each of your weeks. Um, this to me is like a complete game changer, honestly. And go ahead. D Dana, the, so one of the challenges we have with Keller is if, I, if I'm an agent and I'm looking at this and this has never been the way that I operate as a, as a person, right? Yep. And I see you doing that. I literally just, the emoji with the stars, I'm just like, wow, that's a cool person who's really got their stuff together. But how, how did you get to this point? Or what would you say to agents that don't live like this? Because the majority of them don't. Yeah, well, I was one of those agents for the last 13 years. So I 100% understand um, I'll tell you for me, it was a, it was a quote that Linda McKissick being a mentor of mine has told me numerous times, uh, when the pain gets great enough, you'll make a change. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I don't know if that resonates with anybody else, but it, it works and it it's true in everything in your life. And mm -hmm. the pain of last year for me, working the hardest I've ever worked in my whole entire life. Number one, uh, number two, being all over the place. I have many businesses. I'm a very, a, I'm a very accountable, responsible person. Meaning if you're in my world, I don't take that lightly. I will, I will lay awake at night. Uh, see, that's why I shouldn't have put him down. Sorry. He's going to bark. I'll lay awake at night worrying that, that I need to make sure that I, my life is big enough for you to be in it. You know what I mean? And so the, the pain of last year, finally, I think was, was great enough for me that I was like, okay, I've got to get my, you know what together. Mm -hmm. So I've got to get better habits. I've got to be more disciplined. I've got to get on track with my goals because, you know, Gary says it's called supercharging where you're in an area in your life where you might be running like at a really high rate. You're, you are on it all the time. And what Gary says is it feels like you're never going to get out of that. Your, your family's being sacrificed. Your friends are being sacrificed. Your, all of all the things you feel like you just can't make anybody happy. Yeah. And there, and I've been there. I don't know if you guys have been there, but I've been there. Uh, and last year was one of those years for me. And, yeah. and the reality is that what Gary says is he said one time, Dana, you're supercharging. Like you might have three or four or five years in your life where you're supercharging, knowing that this isn't how it's going to be forever. But when you know what those five-year goals are that you, you want to get to, then you're going to take those years and you're going to, you're going to supercharge to get there. And then, and then it's going to be different on the other side of that. And so I feel like that that's just the mindset that I've been trying to adopt. So, I mean, no, I was, no, I, w I was not this way always. This is a, this is something I've had to learn to do, honestly. So are you saying that, um, I'm going to put you on the spot, but are, are you saying that it's okay to supercharge or are you saying supercharge with a plan? Supercharge with a plan. Okay. Yes. A hundred percent. I mean, none of us like to not spend time with our families. None of us like to not feel like we're being a good friend or, or none of us like to feel like we can't get back to our clients in time. I mean, yeah. or we're letting our clients down or any of those things. I think you have to know what your end game is and why you're doing it. And I believe this, if you're a realtor, you have a servant's heart. You, you, you are a person who wants to make a difference and help other people. Um, if you don't have that, you probably aren't going to be in the business. Well, I mean, you, you have to have that to be, to be in this business for a long time. You really do. And so I think you have to, you have to get to the point where, you know, you know, why you're doing it and what are those long-term goals for? This is another book I've been reading that I've, I met this guy, Jeff Henderson, um, through the John Maxwell family. 
and he was the CEO of marketing for Chick-fil-A for a really long time. And then he went and, and left Chick-fil-A and opened churches for Andy Stanley in the state of Georgia. And he wrote this book and, and I've been working with this through my teams because it's all about you figure out what do you want to be known for in your business? What do you really want to be known for in your business? And then what are you actually known for? And mm -hmm. then you've got to bridge the gap. Yeah. And, and that's a, that's a, that's a big thing to think about <laughs> really, to be honest, because the only way to answer question number two is to go ask your people, go ask your clients. So like right now we've been sending surveys to all of our people saying, when you think of us, what do you, when you think of real estate partners 360 team, what do you think about? We've been doing it in our market center, Jeff, that's a whole yeah. nother conversation. But when you think of Keller Williams legacy group, what do you think about? Do you think that we're the, the office and the agents that help everybody and, and you want to work with everybody? Or do you think that our agents are all a bunch of a-holes and, and we don't do anything to help our community? Like really, what is it? And then how can we bridge the gap? And, and I think those are just things that we have to think about going into this year because we're, we're playing a different game. That's incredible. That's, that's great. In typical fashion, you went up to me. We just had our ALC meeting and we asked this question, what are we known for? Love it. What are we? Like, hey, I'll tell you one thing. I mean, in our office, we did this and I had 98 and we have an, an, one of my offices in Ohio, we have about 270 agents. We had 98 people respond and it was eye opening. In one of my other offices, it was great. In this office, they, you know, one of our top things that they said was it was too hard to engage. Yep. And sometimes it's hard to hear those things. But when, instead of pointing fingers, I pointed thumbs and said, okay, wait a minute what what are we doing that our agents feel like it's too hard to engage in our market center and then we took a hard look at the training calendar and i'm like wow we think this is awesome and they look at it like holy crap there's something every single day i don't even know what i'm supposed to be you know it's just That's right. it's a lot of discovery but when you think about that as a realtor as a business owner and remember really i shouldn't say realtor i should say business owner because tony DeSello asked me one time when you wake up every morning and your feet hit the ground, do you think of yourself as a realtor or as a business owner? <laughs> and I was like, Ooh, great question. <laughs> um, because we're business owners, right? I mean, that's, that's what we wake up every day to do. But I just think we have to think about how our clients view us and what do we want them to see us as, do we want them to see us as an agent who's takes forever to return their phone calls and we don't give back to the community and we don't create an experience or, Hey, I want everybody that I know to work with, I'm going to say Sherry, because I see your face right now, to work with Sherry because she creates the ultimate experience. She brings things for my kids to do. She sent us food when we moved in. She follows up with us every quarter. I mean, she's constantly giving back to the community, you know, whatever those things are. And how can you bridge that gap? That's so cool. That's awesome. We've got, so we, we've got a, essentially 20 minutes of time allot, uh, allotted. Would you be okay with some questions from people? Or yeah. Oh my like, gosh, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And I'll just run through my little notes and see if I missed anything. I tend to get on like a squirrel. Um, and I'm happy to share the 411 template with I anybody that. that wants. I'll share it with you, Jeff, and then you can, you can share it out. Maybe. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm happy to answer any questions. The other, the other thing I'll just, if I can share one more book right now, uh, Dan Sullivan coaches Linda McKissick. And so I've gotten to be a part of his world. He coaches a lot of really, really big entrepreneurs, not just real estate, but um, this is probably my favorite book, like top three I've ever read, who, not how. Um, I would highly encourage yeah. you guys who like to read to put this on your list. Um, it's like life changing. <laughs> and yeah. And there's one thing in there that I just, I, let me, if I can find it, I want to read it to you because it's, it'll just make you think about, um, actually took a screenshot of it. I'll find it. It'll make you think about, about how you're doing your business this year. And let me see. Okay. Um, here it is. So in the book, he says, I know I'm successful when, and he gives 10 things. And so I don't expect you to write these down, but I, I want to just share them with you. Number one, I can wake up every day and ask, what would I like to do today? Number two, my passive revenue exceeds my lifestyle needs. Number three, I can live anywhere in the world that I choose and still operate my business. Number four, I'm working on projects that excite me and allow me to do my very best work. Number five, I can disappear for several months with no effect on my income. Number six, this might be my favorite. There are no whiny people in my life. Yeah. <laughs> Number seven, I wear my watch for curiosity only. 
Number eight, I have no time obligations or deadlines. Number nine, I wear whatever I want all the time. And number 10, I can quit anything I don't like at any time. And it. honestly, when I read those, I was like, okay, well, I'm done. done. Like whatever I got to do to get to that. If I have to wake up at 445, if I have to fill out that 411 every week, <laughs> whatever it is to I'm get in. to that, I'm in, like I'm there. <clears throat> And, and that's, and that's truly like, that's how I'm living my life that this year, <laughs> that's how I'm, that's what I'm encouraging the people in my world to think about. Um, and, and it's just, it's a different mindset. It's a totally different mindset. It's a different mindset than I've ever been used to. Maybe, maybe not what you guys are, but it's, di right. it's different. I think that's huge. Cause I don't, I don't know that we, number one, we don't identify it as specifically as that. And then we don't allow ourselves to think that we can get there. It's just like, I want to be successful rather than bam, this is what success looks like. Bam, 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 bam. Oh, I love that. Yep, absolutely. All right, so let's let's open it up for some uh, takeaways or questions. We've got a great group of people on here. So anybody, uh, questions or takeaways that you'd like to send to Dana? Yeah, I would love to hear an aha or two. Hopefully I gave you guys some. <laughs> <laughs> I got a bunch. <laughs> Dana, this is more of kind of a shout out, but as I was um, talking to you and your operations manager, if anyone wants to have a laugh and see some really great videos, <laughs> your YouTube is awesome. Thank you. So thank you for saying that. Um, so that was another kind of pivot we made for an experience for the team. Um, I'm a big Ken Pozek fan. He's, he's like the Orlando, Florida go-to realtor. He has blown up his business from YouTube. So I've, I, I pick his brain like all the time. And so my partner, Josh and I, uh, for our real estate business, we were like, what can we do to be different? And so about a year and a half ago, we started doing a vlog. Um, I didn't even know what a vlog was. When someone said it, I was like, do you mean to say blog? They're like, no, a vlog, like a video vlog. And, uh, and it was out of my comfort zone, really, to be honest. Um, and then, and then I remember Ken said, "If if you are uncomfortable with video, get comfortable with video, or or you won't be around in five years." And so I was like, "Ouch, that kind of hurt, but okay, I can do it." Right, um, right. And and so we did. Um, but really, we just have a good time. But and we want our clients to see that one of our value propositions is fun. When you work with us, we have a lot of energy. Like you're gonna have fun. We're gonna make your transaction fun and we're going to do everything we can to to do all the all the things get you the best price get you the best deal sell your house all the things but and we're going to have fun um and so we wanted to find a way to show that and and that might not work for everybody and and you might not want to roll around with the gopro in your car and that's perfectly fine <laughs> but there needs to be another thing as is my point to that you have to find your value proposition because each of you are different and unique in your own way and you can come up with something that's your value proposition. I'll never forget, Jeff, when, and you know, there, there's another thing to be said about that too. And John Maxwell always says this, are you taking the time to do the two bookends of success is what John Maxwell calls it, which is preparation on the front end and reflection on the back end. And I don't know about you guys, but I've always sucked at both of those things because I run so fast. I'm always go, go, go onto the next, onto the next. And so preparation uh, up until the last probably three or four years preparation, I, I'm a good winger, really, to be honest, I, yeah. I can wing it with the best of you. Um, and I got to the point where I'm like, okay, if I really did prepare, though, how much more effective, how much more, how much more value could I give to these people? And then reflection, I'm hor I was horrible at, I mean, then, you know, actually, Linda tells a really funny story, Linda McKissick will tell you that her coach made her do this exercise where every quarter, she had to write down the last 90 days, all the wins that she had. She right. moved so fast that she completely forgot that she wrote a best-selling book. Hold. She didn't even have it on her list because she said she was just on to the next. Right. And, and she said, Jimmy was like, wait a minute. We wrote hold. And Linda was like, oh my gosh, I like, I didn't even, I forgot about it. And it was like a best-selling book. Right. And, but I mean, that's just an example of kind of as entrepreneurial brains that we all have of how we are. Um, but I remember years ago, it, it was when everybody was just kind of, well, actually it was in, it was right after the shift in 07, 08, 09. And I don't know any, how many of you were in business then, um, but it was a little scary. And so we were coming out and I was thinking, okay, what is my value proposition going to be? And, and thankfully I even knew what that was then. And so I started thinking about it 
And I just remember thinking, I'm so sick and tired of walking into all these sellers' houses ready to take pictures. And, and they say their house is clean, but, but their clean and my clean were two different cleans. So I would get there and be like, what in the world? Like, we're not ready for pictures. This is crazy. And so after, after the pain of that growing too much, I thought, okay, I'm going to come up with a new value prop. So for the last, I don't know, since I guess 09, probably, well, maybe 09, 2010, um, our thing is every, every, if you list your house with us, we have your house professionally cleaned, professionally photographed and professionally videoed. And we have, and I went to my cleaning lady and said, if I can guarantee you 60 ish cleans this first year, will you do every one of them for a hundred bucks? And she said, yeah. And, and so that was our value prop and it stuck. And I mean, you know, Linda McKissick always says, you know, you've made it in real estate when you go to the grocery store and the person next to you doesn't say, where's the Kiwi? They look at you and say, aren't you in real estate? Yeah. <laughs> and, and so I always remember that. And so from, from that point forward, like I would go places and they would say, aren't you the realtor that will clean my house? I'm like, well, I'm physically not cleaning it, but I will have someone that's going to clean your house. So you just have to think, you have to really spend that time to prepare and reflect and say, okay, what can I do that this year is going to set me apart from everybody else? What, what's that value prop going to be? Is it a crazy vlog? Is it, you know, is it an experience you're going to do? Is it a charity you're going to lean into? What is it? So how do you find that? So we got a lot of agents on this call that we hear that, but like, what, what's your process on how do I figure out what my value proposition is or what would you recommend for them? Yep. I would, um, well, first I would go back last year and ask yourself three questions. What did I do really, really good that I need to keep doing? Um, what did I do that I was not good at that didn't work that we just need to get rid of? And then what did we do like so-so that could be good if we really took the time to improve on it? And right. if you, if you start with those three questions and then kind of build off from there, and then also I would ask your people, I mean, one of the best ways to figure out what, what something you can do for your people that would be a value is to ask them. I mean, send out a survey. I mean, I gave away a green egg one time just to try to get feedback from all of our clients. Um, we did a two, two 60 day kind of thing where we sent survey, like a couple different surveys to get their feedback. And, and whoever responded to everyone got their name in and I gave away a green egg because somebody told me if you're doing giveaways that someone wouldn't take 30 minutes out of their lunch break to drive across town to do, then your, then your rewards aren't big enough. We would say like, Hey, do this for a $10 Starbucks gift card. And I wondered why nobody did it. And then I'm like, well, I probably wouldn't do it for a $10 Starbucks gift mm -hmm. card. So they're probably not doing it for a $10 Starbucks gift card. So it depends on what your client, who your clientele is also, by the way. Um, but go ask them. I mean, ask, I would say, ask your people what, what, just like, honestly, I'm asking my top agents right now, what would make you unrecruitable? <laughs> If, if yeah. somebody else calls you and says, I'll write you a check for 150 grand, what would make it unrecru what would make you unrecruitable to say, I believe in the models and the systems and, and the value of this company. So there's no amount because I'm in Dana's world or I'm in the Keller Williams world or whatever it is that I would take. I would go back and ask your clients, you know, what would make it to where you would never even think of another real estate agent before? What would that experience have to look like? Because remember, according to NAR, all of them can name three realtors off the top of their head. Bam, yep. bam, bam, just like that. So oh. what would it what would it take for you to be the number one that they name? Because if you're not the first one, it doesn't really matter. Let's just be honest. I mean, who cares if you're the second or third name that they name? It doesn't matter. The people are going to use the first name that they say. And that's that belly to belly and relationship stuff. Stay, stay on the radar. Stay. Yep. That's awesome. Yeah. Cool. Um, so we have a question from Matt. Uh, can you see the chat or you want me to read it? Oh, through? nope. I'll pull it up right now. Let me see. If portal sites and not other brokerages are our competition, which I get the, how do you talk to agents in your market centers that have a good portion of their business that comes from those accounts? Great question. <laughs> um, I think you've got to be really careful, really, to be honest around that. If, if a lot of your business comes from, from those, I think, well, I'll tell you what Gary said, which is you need to really diversify your, your, your lead sources. So number one, I'm not saying stop buying leads. I mean, you know, that that's not what it is, but I think you need to diversify your lead sources. So like one of the biggest reasons why for our people, we've been doing the experience with all of our top 20% is because a lot of their business is very lead online lead focused. And so what we're moving more towards is how can you really up, like how can you 10 X the referrals and the business that you get from your sphere and from your own database? So don't cut the, don't cut those sources, but you got to really lean into like, what are two other heavy sources that 
if though if that source went away, your business wouldn't go away, basically, for lack of better words. That's so right. lean lean into your sphere, lean into your database. I mean, you may like I know one team right now in the office, they have put together this insane one three five. Um, because I I'm very much like I love all the ideas, but we have to have a plan behind it. So you got to get a plan for whatever your big idea is. And a one, three, five to me, is just the easiest thing. I love a one pager of anything. I just think it's simple and easy, but they have a whole one, three, five around how this year they, they, for the first time ever, they want one of their top three lead sources to truly be open houses. She's like, I'm sick of sitting in open houses and not getting any business. And really the people who say that are the people that don't 10 X their open houses. So, I mean, they're putting out a minimum of 20 open house signs when they do it. They have a seven day promotion ahead of time. Even if the house goes under contract, they're still doing it. They're doing postcards to the hundred homes around the one that's being open. They're doing an extra hour either on the front end or the back end just for neighbors. We used to say, we don't want a bunch of neighbors to come through. Well, now we need to say, hey, come come pick who do you want your neighbor to be? Inventory is so low. We want to give you the first look at this house that's coming in your neighborhood. I mean, they're 10Xing their open houses. And really, Matt, it's because probably over 60% of her business comes from Zillow leads right now. And so she's just trying to diversify and, and, and get some different lead sources coming in. You know, it's what just hit with me is you, you said uh, diversify your lead sources, but then you said the word business. And I realized that if I was running a business, not in the real estate vertical, that it would be a no brainer that I would never lean on one pipeline. Exactly. But- in real estate, we always lean toward like, oh, I get my leads from Zillow or I get my leads from X. That's that's not a business conversation. Yep. Right. I mean, I mean, Gary's taught us we should have three main, we should be able to have three main lead sources. We should have three main business sources. And one's always going to be higher. But mm-hmm. Gary also challenges us if your sphere and database and repeat referral isn't your number one, then you need to re- you need to evaluate that. That's right. That's awesome. Do we have any more questions from anybody? We could just feed Dana espresso and she'll go all day. So. <laughs> Actually, reality is I don't drink caffeine. I'm normal. You <laughs> you I can't or you wouldn't even like want me to be on here. You're welcome, Matt. <laughs> I'm the same way with Red Bull. You just keep it away from me, right? <laughs> yeah, no, I would like be in the hospital probably. <laughs> uh, so, Dana, you mentioned your morning routine. Would you be willing to flesh that out for everybody? Yeah, sure. Um, absolutely. Uh, this is new to me too. So if I, if I can do this, anybody can do this because I'm the person that like wakes up and looks at my Instagram was the person before I would like say good morning to Adam. So uh, I'm not proud of that, by the way, but I'm just saying if I can do this, anybody can do this. Um, so first thing when I wake up, uh, I do a devotion. I do my devotion. I do it on my phone right now. And I have another thing I do, but I use the um, version Bible app. And currently I'm at 155 day streak in a row of not breaking it. Um, 21 weeks. I did I was longer. I broke it when we were traveling and now I'm, and not that it's about the number, but all of us are a little bit competitive, right? So I like to keep the streak going. Um, so I, I do that very first thing at the, and then I spend 30 minutes, well, about 20 minutes now, really of a uh, prayer time that I did in my 21 days of prayer and fasting. I, I, I write a out my prayer for the day every morning. Um, and then I do the daily John Maxwell reader. It's just one page. I've given this book. I bet you I've given away 500 of these books. I'm not even exaggerating. It's my favorite book. I've used it for years. Um, it's just a one pager every single day. Uh, it's so good. It's really leadership focused, um, and just really entrepreneurial focused. Um, I, I, and then what, uh, one of the many books that I'm reading, I, I try to spend about 15 minutes just reading that morning, just to kind of start my day with a good mindset. And I do all of that before I look at any like emails or social media or text or anything I, that this is new to me, like within the last six months, probably of, of not like going straight to my phone. Um, I, uh, and then after that, I, I mean, I, this is silly, but I don't know. I drink a whole liter of water. I, I don't, I try, I don't drink any like pop or anything anymore. I don't know what you call it in North Carolina. I'm from the country. So sorry if that offended you that I said pop, but, um, and, uh, and I drink a protein shake and, um, and I, uh, I actually don't exercise in the morning. 
Um, I exercise in the afternoon, usually around 4.15. I either do my walk and run or I do yoga. Um, I, that's one thing I've tried to change. Honestly, it, I have really thick hair. It's really hard for me to shower and like do my, and all that stuff in the morning. So I don't, so I don't do it for that purpose, but, um, that's my morning and it's helped so much. I mean, for January, I did no alcohol, no sugar. And oh my gosh, like my mind felt so I intermittent fast. So I don't eat until like lunch usually, but my mind was so much like clearer. I don't even know how to explain it, but it just, um, not that I do like a ton of alcohol or a ton of sugar in general, uh, but just not having it for 30 days. (laughs) What'd you say? We're all judging you. Yeah. When you said that, Yeah, don't judge me. I'm not like, (laughs) (laughs) but yeah, so that's, that's my morning. Thanks for sharing that. You're welcome. All right, we got time for one more. If anybody else has a question, aha takeaway. I, wanna, I was going to say my aha was the difference that there's no difference between a disciplined person and a non-disciplined person. Like that, that the habits is the only difference was huge to me. Yeah, I love that. Thanks, Hannah, for sharing. I love that. Well, thanks uh, for being here and bringing so much energy, Dana. It's oh to- yeah, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. I love to do it. It's, I love to see all you guys. You have a great, you have a great leader. Jeff has been one of my favorite people. You know, like you meet friends inside of Keller Williams and you're like, oh, they're cool. No, I love Jeff. Jeff is like where it's at. You guys have a great leader. From the minute that Adam introduced me to Jeff, I was like, oh, I just, actually, I was like, how can we be in business together? <laughs> no, I had the same thought. It's all, um, so one thing I'm looking around the, uh, the screen right here and I'm, I see a lot of people that have, really big businesses or businesses that are on that, you know, when you get that acceleration and they're about yep. to explode. So there are people that are up against ceilings right now. I don't want to call anybody out by name, but I see a lot of people with a lot of momentum. Dana is an amazing resource. If you have a question or anything you want to throw her away, please do so because you got a unique opportunity here. Yes. And, and you can all like, I'm, a, I'm like openly accessible. I, I, I'm actually interviewing Ben Kenny today um, at two o'clock and, uh, and, and I'm really pumped to do that. But I'll tell you the thing I love about him is like, he responded to me on Facebook. <laughs> so, I mean, it, and, and I just feel like when I see leaders like that, that's who I always want to be too. So you can reach out to me. Um, my email is Dana Gentry at kw.com, whatever is the easiest way. I'm happy to help any, any way I possibly can. And for those of you that are at that place in your business, just remember um, Gary always says, and it's never been more true. Anytime that you're feeling like that, you're hitting that ceiling. Um, you're either missing a person or a system or both. And, and that to me is why, like, we all need to be reading this book right now. Um, I mean, there's tons of great books. I know everybody gets books thrown at them all the time. This is like game changer lights out. I mean, it's, it's so different. It makes you think about a, a who for everything. It's actually made me think about as like this. And for those of you that know, like, this is so not me. But I'm like, do I need somebody to drive me when I travel to the market centers? Because the hours that I waste driving, oh my gosh, I could be so much more doing so much more productive things. But I'm also so like, right. need a test driver? Test. like what is that even about? But it, it gets you thinking about, man, what are you doing that you should be leveraging that you could really be making a bigger difference if you were using that time to do something else? That's right. That's yeah. Awesome. Any, anybody, anybody else have a takeaway or anything? I feel like I monopolized your whole meeting. So I hope that was okay. Thank you for having me. So Dana, the way this works is we have one meeting a month that is a guest speaker and we reserve that whole time. And oh, perfect. Were- okay. I was like, when are you going to do like the other stuff in a meeting? <laughs> Cause I've used all the time. We're super happy to have you. So if you guys could do me a favor, uh, Dana, you are awesome. If you guys could unmute and give her a thank you or applause or something, that'd be awesome. I think she crushed it. Thank you. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you, Dana. So thank you so much thank for you. having me. I do have a Facebook group. Jeff, can I can I share it again? Thank Wednesday you. morning mindset. Um, if you just search on Facebook and every Wednesday morning I do this morning I did a great interview with a guy. Um, it's all on mindset. It's 30 minutes at nine Eastern every Wednesday morning. So I'd love to have you hop on. Yeah. We'd love anybody should do that. It's, it's awesome. Thank cool. you. Thank you all so much. Have a great blessed rest of your week. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. See you. Next meeting. Thank right. you. Thank you.